hey you guys let's get into this really quick chicken sizzler so don't forget to like and subscribe before we get into it and let's go so now i'm starting with my chicken thighs here if you guys notice in most of my recipes i do use chicken thighs that's because i prefer dark meat over light meat but like i always say you can always use chicken breast if you want to i'm just peeling off the fat off of the side here really quick and that's what it looks like perfectly done next i am going to take my potatoes and i'm just gonna cube those up really quick um this is one of the first things that you want to get started because this usually takes the longest um we are gonna boil these so this part is completely optional i just feel like when i cube them up like this they take a lot less time to cook so i'm just gonna add those to some hot some boiling hot water along with a little bit of salt and i'm just gonna let those cook until they're super soft next these are seasonings that i used for my chicken here i'm just gonna drizzle some olive oil all over that and then i'm going to go ahead and add in all of my seasonings i'm gonna link all of them down in the description below as usual um you guys i literally usually use the same seasonings all of the time um <laughs> it just depends if i'm cooking like a different uh cuisine from another country i would probably incorporate some more seasonings of different types you know and like i said i'm gonna add in all of the seasonings down below um as far as measurements i'm gonna try to remember how much um i use of each one but i want you guys to get comfortable with using your eyes to figure out you know how many seasonings that something uses especially when you're using the seasonings that contain like sodium i want you guys to start to get comfortable with learning how much is um too much you know remember i always say that you guys can always add in um a little bit less because it's always easier to add more salt than it is to take out salt and you know seasonings just don't consist of those seasonings that contain um sodium as well you want to learn how to incorporate herbs and spices into your seasonings as well to help bring up the flavors you know what i mean it doesn't always have to be um some sodium based seasoning and now i just added in a little bit more olive oil um i had my boyfriend put on some gloves and help me with this part as far as mixing up the chicken because i was dealing with the baby for one second here so he wanted to help me out which is really sweet of him now i'm just gonna go ahead and chop up some bell peppers i use one red bell pepper and i also use a green bell pepper and an orange and i just chopped out all of the sides of those i rinsed them off and now i'm just gonna julienne them i believe that's how you say it just cut them straight basically um they don't have to be perfect cuts we are not cooking for gordon ramsay we're just cooking for our family here so just take your time with it you know feel out the knife especially if you guys aren't used to cooking you know you want to take your time especially when you're using knives you know because you don't want to um you don't want to injure yourself because that is going to be the worst part now once i chopped up all of my peppers here i just added them to a bowl um and i also went in with a red onion here I used half of it at first and then I went back afterwards and I used the whole thing. Now I'm going to take my chicken thighs here and I'm just going to lay them in my cast iron skillet pan. Um, this was the one that had like the, the ridges in it for like the grill marks. And you can always use the flat one as well or any other pan for that matter of fact. And I'm just going to let the chicken cook for about, I want to say like six minutes on each side. I'm just making sure that everything is most likely cooked inside here. Um, while I had one set cooking inside of the pan here, I literally just put the ones that were already cooked in like on a sheet tray 
or any sort of like oven safe pan and i just turned my oven on to about 300 degrees and i just let them sit in there just to be sure now these are the potatoes after they're finished like i said i like them to be really really soft and mushy because this helps me so much i go ahead and i add in about three to four tablespoons of butter here i add in some parmesan cheese i want to say about i used about half a cup for this batch here this was one full bag of the red potatoes here because i was making enough food for about four people i went in with one fourth cup of sour cream And then I also added in, I added a little bit more, sorry. <laughs> I also added in one fourth cup of heavy cream. I went in with some onion powder. I usually would use um, garlic if I was just making it for myself. But um, my boyfriend is allergic to garlic mashed potatoes, so I can't. Um, I go in with some parsley as well, some black pepper. Um, and I use a little bit of any type of complete seasoning that you want honestly or you can just do regular salt it's all up to you like i said i added some dried parsley i want to say like close to like a handful just for some color there and now i'm gonna take my um, potato masher and i'm just gonna mash up those potatoes really really nice just making sure that there's no clumps left behind if you guys if you guys have someone else with you you can give them this job right here because it is a little bit tedious i do recommend if you guys have like that little um i don't know what it's called but it's just like the handheld potato masher i know some of you guys know what i'm talking about that you just put the potatoes inside of it and then you squeeze it and they come out like perfectly mashed um i would recommend using that and now I'm just taking my spatula and just smoothing out those potatoes. And I'm just going to put the lid back on and just let it sit on the stove. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cook up those bell peppers. So I just add it to um, a pan with some olive oil inside. Also adding in my onions here. And I did add about half a teaspoon of garlic. And for my seasoning for these vegetables, I ended up using um, one of the fajita packets with the fajita seasonings. That's what I use to season up the vegetables. And I just give that a mix and I'm just going to cook everything down until everything is nice and soft. And for the extra seasonings, I did end up using like onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, chili powder and yeah i believe that was it mix those up really really nice make sure that everything is incorporated really well and then just turn it off now for my chicken once i was finished with everything i started slicing them up after they rested for about i want to say like 10 minutes out of the oven And for my skillet, my skillets were inside of the oven already. So I just put the cheese to the bottom here. And what this is going to do, it's going to form like a really nice crust. Like I wish I took a video to show you guys. It's going to literally form like this nice um, golden brown like crust underneath those mashed potatoes. It's going to be so yummy. Like you can literally just like pick it up with like the spoon and roll it and it would be like as solid as like a burrito like literally now i'm gonna scoop in those mashed potatoes i'm gonna go ahead and add some more cheese on top um my mashed potatoes were still hot so it did end up melting but if your mashed potatoes are not still hot then you can just pop this in the oven really quick and just let it melt off after I added on that cheese, I'm going to go ahead and add some of those vegetables that we sauteed up as much as you would like. And after I added on those vegetables, I'm going to take my chicken thighs 
and i'm just gonna lay that on top of it really really nicely just making sure that everything fits you know i was really extra with the presentation here and I'm, i am gonna show you guys um how i would do it how i did it for family style this was just like his little personal skillet right here and this is how it looks and this is how i did the family style right here i just put like all the potatoes on one side after i put the cheese down and i put the chicken on one side and i put the veggies to the top of the potatoes so like I said, cheese all the way down. Make sure that this skillet was inside of the oven heating up the whole time on about like 350 degrees, nothing too crazy. Spread the cheese all around, making sure that you don't miss any spots here. And you just give it a couple seconds just to melt down really nicely. Make sure that you're spreading it out. You don't wanna put the mashed potatoes on too quickly because you want to make sure that everything is getting melted really nice. Now, I just took my um, my oven mitt and I'm just making sure that you're using an oven mitt, you guys. I tried to grab this without the oven mitt and I burned the middle of my hand. It was so painful. Make sure that you're getting all of that and that's how it's going to look. And now I just took my ice cream scoop and I'm just laying down those mashed potatoes really nicely on half of the pan here. And I just take like a spoon or a spatula of some sort and I just make it really nice and flat. Next up on uh, the mashed potatoes, I'm just gonna put all of those nicely cooked veggies, making sure that everything is nice and flat. And on that side that still has the cheese there, that's where I'm gonna put my chicken. And there you have it. Like, you know, just top it with like some parsley if you want some nice coloring on top of that. You guys can add some green onions as well if you wanted to, it's all up to you. And this was the finished product here, you guys. I hope you guys enjoy. This was so fun and so yummy to make. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you guys have any questions. If you're new here, welcome to the gang. And thank you guys so much. Bye.